Speaking of, the one and only Nick Saban, he joined Greeny earlier on Get Up. Take a listen. Well, I think first of all, Kaylin's done a really good job in the transition. Uh, but I think the most important thing for him is, you know, how do we get started? Can we play with consistency early? You know, you got players buying into a new offense, players buying into a new defense. Uh, so for them to have a little success early uh, would go a long way to solidify that buy-in so that they can play with confidence and be successful in the future. Lucky us, we get Paul Feinbaum and Heather Dinich now joining us live from SEC Media Days in Dallas, Texas. And forget the coaching change here, Paul. Let's go to you first. Uh, would Alabama's season be a success without a national title? Yes, and I know that sounds uh, really weird to say considering what Nick Saban has done, but I think in the first year of Kalen DeBoer getting to the playoffs would be enough to satisfy the Alabama fan base, which quite frankly is used to national championships. Uh, Saban won pretty much every other year. Uh, it took Nick Saban three years, but don't forget, he, uh, he took over a downtrodden program. He didn't take, uh, Kalen DeBoer is taking over a program that went to the playoffs last year. But I, I think to say anything else is really stretching the limit of anyone's imagination. What do you think, Robert? You think that it's a, a not necessarily a failure, but do you think it's title or bust for Alabama this year despite the coaching change? Yeah, I actually do think it's national title or bust. When you look at Nick Saban, what, what he was able to accomplish at Alabama, 17 years, six national titles. That means one every less than three years, Alabama was hoisting up the trophy. And whether we think that that's fair or not, Alabama fans have been saturated with success under Nick Saban. They're not known to be realistic fans. They always believe they can win a national title. And I know it's hard for a guy like Kalen DeBoer, who I covered while he was at Washington, it's hard to be the guy that replaces the guy. But if there was ever a guy for the job, it would be Kalen DeBoer. I want to take you guys back to last year when Washington beat USC. And Zion Tupuolu Fatui had his father pass away the week before. And you saw Kalen DeBoer embrace him and console him after the game. That, to me, is the difference of why Alabama will still have uh, extreme success with Kalen DeBoer, because his players love him. He builds relationships with them at a much deeper level. And the guys at Washington would run through a brick wall for Kalen DeBoer, and I think the same thing will happen at, at Alabama. But I do think that the fans are still expecting a national title, and I don't think that that's an unrealistic expectation. Go ahead, Paul. Um, listen, I, I don't want to start an argument this early in the morning with my friend Robert, but, but I talk to Alabama fans every day, and, and they really believe that Kalen DeBoer has done an exquisite job of this transition. I mean, if he had fallen, fallen on his face on day one, uh, it would be one thing, but he is recruiting at an elite level. He had about two or three bad days, and he lost some major five-star talent, but he has a really good staff. He's got enormous talent coming into this program. And as unrealistic as the world thinks Alabama fans may be, and they have been, I, I made a living off of that, please don't misunderstand me. I, I think they, <laughs> there is a grace period considering that this man was in the playoffs last year, that he went to the national championship game, and he's replacing the greatest coach of all time. Yeah, I, I mean, not for nothing. Alabama did also go to the CFP. They ended up losing to the eventual champion, which was Michigan, in overtime in the semifinals. Let's bring in Heather Dinich now. She was having some audio issues. There she is. Hello, Heather. And so now I ask you, do you think it would be a successful season for Alabama if they do not win a championship? It will be a successful season for Alabama if they make the college football playoff, which they should. I don't think they're going to win the SEC. That's up to Georgia and Texas, in my opinion. But they should be one of the 12 teams. There should be a grace period for Kalen DeBoer. But that would be assuming that life is fair and that people are logical. When you're <laughs> Alabama and you make the college football playoff last year, and now that it's expanded this year, just making the playoff is not going to be enough. It's always national title or bust at Alabama, and I think it's the same thing this year. But I will say this, Jalen Milrow, him and Kalen DeBoer's offense, they're truly going to be able to unlock his true ability because although he's not the same quarterback as Michael Penix Jr. in the way that he throws the football around, they will tap into his ability as an athlete 
and teach him to throw the football more efficiently as a passer. I am very excited to see Jalen Monroe this year with Kalen DeBoer leading him in that offense. Shay, I, I think the world has literally turned upside down on this axis when, when, when Robert is sounding more like me and I'm sounding more like him. Um, I, I don't, I don't want to continue this. I don't want to make this. I don't want to make this into a food fight, but I'm going to Robert because, uh, I mean, I have said things like you have said before. And under Nick Saban, it was a bust if he didn't win. But that, that was just the expectation. But, but I, I, I think Alabama fans. As spoiled as they are, and there's no more entitled fan, well, maybe Texas, even though they haven't accomplished what Alabama has, but there's no more fan base that, that expects more. They, they appreciate what DeBoer has done, as, as Heather pointed out. And now, it, now, let me add something. If they don't make the playoffs, then everything Robert said is applicable. I mean, it, there, there will be uh, chaos uh, personified in Tuscaloosa and elsewhere. But, but I think the 12-team playoff gives everybody a little cushion. And, and I, I think because Georgia is now the new Alabama, Alabama has a little bit of grace. So I'll end it here. I'm going to throw one more uh, can of sardines at you, Robert, and call it quits. <laughs> Heather, can I laugh. on this, guys? <laughs> yep, can go I, ahead, Heather. Well, I, I wanted to say that as much as Robert likes Jalen Milrow, and he is an outstanding quarterback, so much of Alabama's hopes depend on him not taking as many sacks. And when he uses his legs, which he's so very good at, and running around the perimeter, which is a natural instinct, right? And I think he'll get better. He's got such a strong arm, throws such a great deep ball. But I want to say 44 sacks last year, a lot of those were not on the offensive line. So his ability to make reads on the defense, I do think he's going to get better as a quarterback under Kalen DeBoer. But a lot of their success hinges on that. And look, quite frankly, the reality is I think Georgia and Texas are better football teams, period. There. Robert, last word. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Heather, I understand what you mean about Jalen Milrow. And what I would say is that a quarterback's ability to read a defense is as much on him as it is on the coaching staff. And what I think Kalen DeBoer is going to do, or should I say what I know Kalen DeBoer is going to do, is he's going to tap into what Jalen Milrow does well and does best. I think that they will be more RPO-based, less drop-back pass-based. It's going to allow Jalen Miro to have clean reads and use all of his athleticism and that big arm and play action to hit shots down the field. When you hear people talk about a quarterback's ability to read a defense, typically that means they want them to read the defense in the same way that the coach does. Great coaches get their players to read a defense the best way that they know how to. That's where I think Kalen DeBoer differentiates himself, and he will get the best out of Jalen Milrow, and I think Alabama fans will be very happy with it. All right. Uh, when you look ahead, though, to the biggest threat, really, in the SEC, Georgia right now, the 2-1 to one favorite to win the conference, followed by Texas, Ole Miss, and then Alabama and LSU. Guys, thank you very much. Give something.